the web is getting fat. Um, accidental slowness is a problem that a lot of us face. You in the, the general slowness, and most people in the performance <laughs> side of things. That's fair. I deserve that. Performance is important. Um, yeah. Like it's very easy to like go and ship a site that contains a ton of images and not realize just how slow that is, especially on mobile, where people have got like limited network connections and limited bandwidth. And this is where like the picture elements all set. They're kind of coming in to help with all of this, but no. it's still there's still images that have to be downloaded. Even then, like people should probably have like a good image optimization um, workflow inside their build pipeline. Yeah. Just something simple that makes sure that you're like trimming down the fat of what you're shipping down to your users. Well, because you never really notice the difference anyway. It's just like literally free time that you're just saving no. a user. Yeah. So like, what do you use to optimize all your images? So I usually use, uh, in my build process, I'm usually using something like ImageMin, which um, is a tool that can figure out, like it, it's got some opinionated choices about how to optimize like images, like images like PNGs and JPEGs and GIFs. So I think it's using like Opti PNG and JPEG Mini and GIFsicle. Yep. But if all of that sounds totally crazy to you, um, another really nice desktop tool is ImageOptim. Yep. So image optim is cool because it just means that you just like take a directory of images, drop it in, it'll do some magic, and you can just like re-upload them. You're done. So like I I mostly use like um, Grunt Image Min. Like I use all of that, yeah. and it works absolutely great. I've seen the image optim like that's great whenever I'm doing prototypes. Just drop it in there. The one thing that I've ended up doing is using Image Magic to like auto generate images of different sizes. Right. They've actually got a strip metadata like command in there, mm -hmm. and it literally does a lot of what some of the other tools do. So it's just like at least stripping out some of the additional stuff that's not needed. When you're talking about stripping stuff out, you're, you talk about like SVG, I guess, where you've got like a ton of metadata that tools usually include. Yeah, it's just need. like oh, this is made by Inkscape or Sketch. It's just like the person doesn't care that's viewing it. Yeah. So get rid of it. The obvious other tool is um, web page test. So web page test is kind of awesome. Yeah. It really, really helps with like um, making sure that you're you're hitting decent speed index scores. Um, quick tip there, like if if you're trying to like do any sort of benchmarking web page test, like and you you just like do a single a single run um, multiple times over, you might find that there's a bit of a difference in scores. Yeah. So web page test has this advanced option where you can like run the same test multiple times over, and then it'll yeah. like just average out the stuff. I use that, find it pretty reliable. Maybe you would. Like, too? yeah, like I tend to find the web page test is almost like PageSpeed Insights, but yeah. just like on speed. Like, it's just you've got so many more options, so much more details. And like, depending on where you are in terms of trying to tune performance, yeah. like, web page test is great for highlighting like simple things like, hey, you know what? You should be enabling compression with just gzip. And it's right. just like, that is a one line change in like a HD access file. Yeah. Web page test is literally like, yo, you're not even getting your first file down to here or your first render yeah. isn't until like three seconds in. The video film strip in web page test is amazing. Yeah. Um, really, really useful for seeing, okay, well, how many seconds is it going to take before my user can actually even interact with my page? Yeah. Um, good for C performance, good for like just being able to see what your users are going to see. One last thing that I'm going to say about web page test that they've just added in is like the cost of your site. And it literally just says, like, this is how, like, the number of megabytes, this is what it equates to uh, someone in that country downloading your site. Like, it's, like, for me, it's 22 cents from Vanuatu? Vanuatu? I don't know. Somewhere. And it's just, like, it's interesting because you've got a massive, huge site with tons of images. People in other countries may not actually be able to afford, like, viewing your site. Anyway, I ran your site through PageSpeed Insights. Oh, no. And someone's doing a little cheeky... Well, but you're cheating, really, aren't you? I, I, would, I wouldn't call it cheating. I would say I'm giving people a fast path to, uh, to, a see, fast path. to, to seeing my homepage. <laughs> so you've added in a site which is um, basically very limited in functionality to increase your page speed score, Some, some would call it a, a landing page or a hero page. Because what, when you actually run it, adiosmani.com, what happens is you've actually got a redirect because you should never have a redirect for any website no, you can no, avoid you it. And your one goes adiasmoney.com. That jumps to www.adiasmoney.com slash blog. I, I like uh, to uh, see. Uh, <laughs> that then goes to www.adiasmoney.com slash blog slash. So it's added slash on the end. That's important. And then it's gone adiasmoney.com slash blog slash. So you've managed to go from your homepage to three different versions of your blog URL. I, I like to think of my site as a, uh, a learning ground for anti-practices.